Sasha Joyner. Vladimir Harkonnen Origins, the deadly genocidal tyrant from Dune Explored. In today's video, we will explore the origins and involvement of one of the most influential characters from the long-running franchise Dune, also known as Dune Chronicles. This legendary science fiction media franchise has its revolutionary insurgence with the novel Dune, written by Frank Herbert in 1965. Since then, there have been countless new publications and adaptions in different forms of media. We believe the easiest way to describe how big of an impact Dune has had on the world of science fiction is by telling you how the names of the planets used in the novels are now used as real-world nomenclature of certain terrains and Saturn's moon Titan. But today, we are not talking about the influence of the franchise as a whole. Rather, we are here to discuss the role of one particular character. His name is Syridor Baron Vladimir Harkonnen, more commonly referred to as Baron Harkonnen. Vladimir was the penultimate ruler of House Harkonnen, which means he was second to last. He was an architect of destruction and proved on multiple occasions occasions that his insatiable thirst for power has no end to it and no boundaries that cannot be crossed. The Baron is described as a grotesquely obese man with an insatiable appetite for power and sadistic pleasures. He uses his wealth and influence to manipulate and control those around him, including his own family members. He is known for his cunning and ruthlessness and will stop at nothing to achieve his goals. He serves as the primary antagonist of the original Dune saga written by Frank Herbert, starting from 1965. He also serves as the primary antagonist character in the film adaptions of the novels, and is hoped to make a return in the 2023 sequel that is scheduled to release in November. Now that we have the essentials and the importance of the character out of the way, without further ado, let's get straight into discussing his early life. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. The Origins and Backstory of the Evil Baron Vladimir was born as the son of a Harkonnen Baron, which means that he was born into the wealthy and influential Harkonnen family, which had a long history of political and economic power in the Imperium, also known as the Galactic Padashah Empire. The Empire was the widespread government figure that ruled over and dominated all of the space known to man. Seeing as to what Vladimir came to be in the latter part of his life, it is safe to say his words could have been, bow to me. Well, of course, that is not true. But it was said that he showed an infinity for ruling over others and was quite engrossed in attaining power to activate the said supremacy. He is said to have enjoyed torturing animals and his servants and to have taken pleasure in inflicting pain on others. This sadistic behavior was encouraged and enabled by his family's wealth and power, which allowed him to act with impunity. He believed himself to be above others, and rightfully so. He was trained as the successor ruler of the House Harkonnen and played the part quite well. During his training, Vladimir's father acted as the head of the then House Harkonnen and was also the Baron and Cyridar, which is the Gallic term for planetary, of the planet Gidi Prime, the historical homeworld of House Harkonnen, later renamed to be Gamu. The following fact will be a particularly hard pill to swallow. Despite what people would be inclined to believe, Vladimir was born an extremely handsome and attractive man. Who knows if it was the money that made him attractive or the power. Nonetheless, he was renowned for his almost perfect muscle physique that would make any man jealous. His downfall came at the hands of Reverend Mother Gaius Helen Mohayim, simply known as Mohayim. She sought revenge on Vladimir for forcing himself on her and to conceive an offspring for him. So she cursed him and gave him a degenerative disease. With this genetic disposition to obesity, Vladimir underwent a plethora of medical treatments to no avail, and the only way to counteract this disease was through gluttony. Despite this, he was a fierce and competitive individual from a very young age, always striving to be the best and to accumulate more power and wealth. Building up from the early success of his predecessors, Vladimir was figuratively handed a kingdom which he aspired to make an empire. As a member of House Harkin, in, he received the best education and training in the arts of politics and warfare. He learned how to manipulate people and situations to his advantage and became a master strategist and tactician. He also developed a deep-seated hatred for House Atreides, the ruling family of the planet Arrakis, which is the only source of the spice melange, the most valuable substance in the universe, which would shape the course of his life. The Baron's hatred for House Atreides stems from a long-standing feud between the two families. He sees the Atreides as 
as a threat to his power and wealth and plots to destroy them. He enlists the help of the Emperor and the treacherous Dr. Yue to carry out his plan in the storyline. He was the chief mastermind in the demise or killing of Duke Leto Atreides of the House Atreides, which occurred during the latter part of Shadam IV's rule. Having no holes barred in his pursuit of success and power, upon his inception, Vladimir used countless immoral means to achieve what he wanted. Treachery, con, blackmail, deception, and perfidy. Nothing was off limits. While the exact details of his early life are not extensively explored, it is clear that Baron was shaped by his family's legacy of power and influence, and by his own desire for domination and control. Exploring the Strange Appearance of Vladimir Harkonnen The appearance of Vladimir Harkonnen is characterized by his extreme obesity, which is described as grotesque and repulsive. The Baron's body is bloated and distended, with layers of fat that make him several times larger than a normal person. His physical appearance is so exaggerated that it has become almost mythic in nature, with rumors of his size, weight, and corpulent frame spreading throughout the galaxy. In addition to his overall size, the Baron's appearance is also marked by several other unusual features. His skin is described as yellow and waxy, with a texture that is reminiscent of boiled leather. His face is also distorted and twisted, with a jowled chin, a bulbous nose, and small close-set eyes. His mouth is large and drooping, with thick lips that are always curled in a sneer. To support his immense bulk, the Baron relies on anti-gravity belt-mounted suspensors that are built into his chair and clothing. These devices allow him to move around with ease despite his massive size. The suspensors are also used to create a cushion of air around the Baron, which protects him from injury and helps to support his weight. These also allow him to be afloat in the middle of nothing but air, which gives him the appearance of an imposing figure and move from one place to another. Due to his sheer weight, Vladimir is completely incapable of moving around, let alone walking with his own might unassisted. We see the use of these suspensors throughout Vladimir's appearances and also when he dies. His corpse is shown to be levitating to a certain degree, as if it was hovering a few inches from the ground while his body was lying there sideways. The reasons for the Baron's extreme obesity are not fully explained in the series, apart from the previous fact that we already discussed regarding Mohayim. It is also suggested that it may be due to a combination of genetic factors and excessive consumption of rich fatty foods. The Baron is known for his gluttony and love of luxury, and it is implied that he uses his wealth and power to indulge his every whim, including his insatiable appetite. As we saw Vladimir in the David Lynch 1984 movie adaption of the story, he was something of a nightmare fuel. His appearance was so outlandishly hideous that such a striking visual was sure to leave a lasting remark on any part of the audience, be it young or old. He was shown to have blue eyes, and it was said that he experimented with various diseases to counter his situation. He would willingly inflict himself with various diseases, be it viruses or otherwise, and that was the cause of the plethora of cysts animating all over his body. He was shown with pulsating boils that sprouted all over his skin, and some of them presumably resulted in the loss of vision also. In this adaption, his suspensors and suit that allow him to hover were woven into his skin so that he could use them as per his will. He was also shown to be a rather psychotic main villain, as he would constantly lose his sensibility and morality whenever he got overexcited. In the 2021 and latest movie adaption of the story, Vladimir's hover suit is not woven into his skin, rather it is implanted in his spine. This must be a result of some future technology where mechanical implants directly into the nervous system are possible, allowing the user to control them as per he wishes. As we said earlier, his skin is absolutely pale, giving him a ghost-like wax model appearance. He is shown to be broad-shouldered and structurally sound as a testament to his previously appealing physique. Thanks to his menacing signature robe in combination with his surreal suspensors. Vladimir looks to be absurdly tall, reaching up to 9 to 10 feet tall. This characteristic also acts as a cinematic tool where the person depicted on the higher ground gives the psychological appearance of being above all the others. Combined with his strong words, signature death stare, and massive stature, Vladimir is one of the scariest-looking antagonists that one could have created in a real-world-like scenario. It is absolutely terrifying to think of what he can do next and what his tyrannical mind is plotting, and all of this uncertainty that fills one at the mere sight of the Baron is an ode to his appearance. 
Kudos to Stellan Skarsgård, who portrayed Vladimir in the 2021 movie. His acting as this tyrannical brute was the stuff of legends. The commitment and endurance that Stellan was able to display, with which he was able to perfect the character, was mind-blowing. It is documented that just putting on the prosthetics and the makeup for the character took around six and a half hours, and the removal of which took two hours. Stellan was absolutely on point with his demeanor, his voice modulation, and his shallow yet plotting face. The Baron's appearance is a striking and memorable aspect of his character, emphasizing his excesses and physical prowess, as well as his dependence on technology to support his massive bulk. His grotesque appearance serves as a visual presentation of his corruption and decay, and underscores the monstrous nature of his personality. What is Baron Harkonnen like? Vladimir Harkonnen is a complex character. Every word in the dictionary that is a synonym for absolutely ruthless is applicable when describing him. It is absurdly difficult to create a character that you absolutely hate and admire at the same time. He is repulsive and compelling, and each and every moment he speaks, he speaks with certainty. He is a man of ultimates and allows no slouching around for anyone in his vicinity. While creating and writing about the character of Vladimir, Frank Herbert sought the way of the corrupt mythos of the Soviets and their unruly Rain. The surname Harkonnen, which sounds rather harsh and strong, was a name in the phone book that Frank was looking at. He believed that the name sounded Soviet enough for him to use in his novel, but in actuality the name Harkonnen is Finnish. As daunting as his name sounds, the appearance and personality of Vladimir trump all those aspects with great intensity. He is an absolutely menacing dictator-like ruler who acts with full force to implode others with his will. He is an inherently evil and sadistic individual, backed by unsurmountable wealth and intellect. The Baron is a master manipulator and strategist, with a talent for twisting situations and people to his advantage. He is able to use his wealth, power, and intellect to control those around him, and he is always thinking several steps ahead. We see this in action in the novel, where the Baron seems to be furious that Leto has taken control of Arrakis, but is secretly plotting to seize the occasion to finally wipe the Atreides off the face of the universe. The Baron is a gluttonous, gigantic gas bag of wickedness and depravity, and that is the best way to describe the evil tendencies that one can think of. He is driven by an insatiable thirst for power and control. He sees himself as a ruler and tyrant, and is willing to do whatever it takes to achieve his ambitions. His hatred for House Atreides is largely motivated by his desire to eliminate any threats to his power. Despite all his descriptions aiming towards being a madman with unlimited power and his appearance being polarizing, either too scary or too funny, Vladimir is highly intelligent and resourceful with a deep understanding of politics, economics, and military strategy. He is able to stay ahead of his enemies by outsmarting them and using his vast resources to his advantage. He is also quite petty with his actions, and he seemingly remembers each and every wrongdoer that he has ever crossed, perpetually plotting to make them taste his wrath for their erroneous ways. He also holds grudges and seeks revenge against those who have wronged him. His feud with House Atreides is fueled by a desire for revenge and a battle for supremacy, and he is willing to go to great lengths to achieve it. In Vladimir's quest for personal dominance, there are no walls that he is unwilling to breach and no boundaries that cannot be crossed. He is shown to be willing to sacrifice not just House Atreides and the young Paul Atreides, but even his own nephew, Glasu Raban, in an effort to elevate Fade Ratha to the position of the seeming savior of Arrakis. He anyway considers Glasu to be irrelevant and an unfit candidate for his successor, and believes that Fade is the rightful future leader. He is also willing to betray his long-term allies, such as the Padisha Emperor, who was in cahoots with him while plotting the downfall of House Atreides. Having no respect for human life, the Baron is completely unforgiving of the plethora of his servants. If any of his pawns were no more of use for House Harkonnen, Vladimir would ensure their demise so that there were absolutely no loose ends in his court. This is something we witness in his interactions with Yua, who had apparently outlived his usefulness for him and was immediately executed upon his orders for doing so. In another scene where Vladimir attempts to teach Fade a lesson, he orders the mass killings of every woman in the pleasure quarters. This unbelievable and seemingly crazy command 
is followed by an invalidating remark where he says, There will always be more women. This type of behavior truly shows how unrelenting he is in achieving his ends. He sees other people's lives as nothing more than a means to an end, and he is loyal to no one, not even his own kin. While communicating with others, Vladimir maintains his composure, and his dialect is quite reminiscent of royalty. He speaks with a calm voice and uses powerful language. He displays a jovial, pleasant, and laid-back personality while conversing, and is shown to address his family members and servants with titles of endearment until and unless they mess up or anger him with their words. When aggravated even in the slightest ways, the Baron ensures the defaulter's execution and reveals himself as the heartless monster that he truly is. The Baron is an unscrupulous, egotistic man who loves the indulgences that his enormous fortune allows him, including the young slaves he frequently molests in addition to his ostentatious clothing and goods. Again, we believe Vladimir is extremely complex, complicated and multifaceted, and it is extremely difficult to come across such well-written characters nowadays. When the Baron speaks, you cannot help but listen to him intently. It is as if you know everything he says has an immediate effect, or it is going to be something so iconic that you will be left thinking about it for the coming week. To make a master manipulator, a sadistic tyrant, and a resourceful strategist sound so viciously compelling is a humongous task that Frank and his successors have mastered beautifully in the Dune franchise. Kenneth McMillan did a brilliant job as Vladimir Harkonnen in the 1984 movie. Kenneth McMillan's portrayal of Baron Harkonnen in the 1984 Dune movie is widely regarded as one of the most iconic and memorable performances from McMillan in science fiction film history. McMillan's performance is praised for its depth, complexity, and sheer physicality he brings to the character. One of the key aspects of Macmillan's performance is his mastery of body language and physicality. He conveys the Baron's monstrousness through his slouched posture, heavy breathing, and exaggerated movements. This physicality is particularly effective in scenes where the Baron is floating on his suspensor belt, creating an eerie and unsettling presence that perfectly captures the character's twisted nature. Another element of Macmillan's performance is his ability to balance the Baron's sadistic and grotesque qualities with a sense of humor and charisma. He delivers his lines with a sly and almost campy charm, making the Baron a compelling and entertaining villain to watch on screen. Moreover, Macmillan's performance captures the Baron's complex psychology, exploring the character's twisted desires and motivations. He portrays the Baron as a man who delights in his own depravity and enjoys inflicting pain on others, but who also harbors deep-seated insecurities and fears of his own mortality. Kenneth Macmillan's performance of Baron Harkonnen is a tour de force of acting that brings depth, complexity, and a sense of both menace and charisma to one of science fiction's most memorable villains. His performance is a testament to the power of great acting to bring even the most outlandish and fantastical characters to life on screen. In the 1984 movie As Dune Begins, we follow the story of how House Harkonnen aims to eliminate Duke Leto of the House of Atreides in search of hierarchical supremacy in hopes of setting up the foundation of an overexpanding empire. The everlasting feud makes Baron Harkonnen extend his ambitions in the most twisted ways possible. In a long-term plan conspired by the Baron, along with Shaddam IV of the Padisha Empire, the Harkonnens aim to lure Duke Leto out of the desert planet of Arrakis and assassinate him and other high-ranking members of House Atreides. To compete such a dangerous mission, the pretense through which House Atreides is lured is that of them taking over the resourceful operations of the highly valuable spice called Melange. Melange is the most valuable resource in the known galaxy due to its capacities of bestowing upon its user extended life and the expansion of consciousness. It also enables the Spacing Guild to literally fold space, allowing them to perform interstellar travel both safely and with immediate effect almost instantaneously. What this conspiracy and deception have in store for Shaddam is the safety in knowing that House Atreides is being dealt with, as he feared the rumors that said they were amassing an army that is not only high in numbers but also skill. While for House Harnikin, it allows the elimination of one of the highest value targets in their pursuit of overwhelming domination of the known galaxy. It also establishes them as the highest power in the Accords and enables them to act without opposition in a diplomatic sense. After the successful slaughter of the defenseless Atreides at the hands of the Harkonnens on Arrakis, Baron Harkonnen orders the execution of Yua, the two-faced secret agent in House Atreides sent by the Harkonnens to close all loose ends. To follow through with this order, Baron sends Mentat Piter de Vries, who kills Yua with the toxic blade. During the attack, 
Baron Harkonnen takes pleasure in torturing and killing members of the Atreides household, including younglings and women. Meanwhile, the captured Leto attempts to covertly kill the Baron by employing the use of a poison gas tooth implant to no avail. Eventually, Baron Harkonnen's death comes at the hands of Aaliyah, the daughter of Jessica, both with latent powers. She was able to overwhelm the forces of the Harkonnens in unison with Paul, who previously gained psionic powers and the ability to manipulate the abundant sandworms on Arrakis. Kevin McMillan's portrayal of Baron Harkonnen is a memorable one, as his understanding of the character serves as a commentary of the corrupting influence of power, as well as the dangers of a society ruled by brutal and sadistic leaders. Frank Herbert's Dune also featured Vladimir Harkonnen as a key character. Written by John Harrison, this three-part miniseries was solely based on the 1965 novel written by Frank Herbert. The name Frank Herbert's Dune is depicted as so because Harrison attempted to be as faithful as he could have been while adapting the novel and turning it into a television series. The miniseries is critically acclaimed and was one of the highest rated and highest grossing programs ever to be broadcasted on the Sci-Fi Channel. The series was followed by a sequel in 2003 named Frank Herbert's Children of Dune which takes its inspiration from the second and third novels. The original miniseries was not only critically acclaimed, but had several accolades under its name. It won two Emmy Awards in 2001 for Outstanding Special Visual Effects and Outstanding Cinematography. It was even nominated for a third Emmy for Outstanding Sound Editing. The reason behind this greatness was director John Harrison's commitment to making the miniseries a faithful interpretation of the novels. He did not intend to change anything that the novels said. Rather, he wanted to expand upon certain elements that were either vaguely discussed in the novels or were not present at all. This basically served as an expansion to the amazing universe of Dune, and Harrison's efforts were clearly noticeable. According to him, the miniseries served to elaborate the story and not edit it. Harrison was able to capture the prophetic reflection of the current generation and the state of humanity that Herbert aimed to display through his words. He wanted to portray how nation-states and political powers are competing against each other for economical and corporational supremacy through the elements Herbert wrote about in Dune. This is exactly where the character of Vladimir Harkonnen comes in. John Harrison was determined to nail the role of the primary antagonist perfectly. If you ask a passionate creator, the word perfect does not exist. Everyone simply aims for it, but it can never be achieved. But as a part of the community behind Dune, it is safe to say that Harrison's character adaptions and extensive storytelling following the plot of Baron Harkonnen were close to perfection and nothing shy of it. Ian McNeese was cast as Baron Harkonnen and faithful to the books. His appearance was not altered to make him look like a perpetually sick person or even someone who attacks anyone who comes in his way. Rather, they sought to show the image of Baron as a rapist and a void filled with nothing but evil. His plotting and manipulative behaviors were highlighted. They were able to portray how ruthless the character truly was. They attempted to show how truly despicable Baron Harkonnen was and how endlessly vicious he could be to achieve his ends. They wanted to make him intriguing and, at the same time, completely appalling. With all of this in mind, Harrison's direction and McNeese's acting skills were truly able to capture a Baroque Lord's disgusting hedonism and narcissism to a great extent. Children of Dune also continued the journey of Vladimir. Vladimir Harkonnen is still a significant character in the subsequent novel Children of Dune, written by Frank Herbert. However, his role in the book is very limited, as he has already died before the events of the story took place. In Children of Dune, which is the third book in the Dune series, the focus shifts to the twin children of Paul Atreides, Leto and Ganema, who are struggling to maintain control over the empire that their father has created. The book explores the themes of power, politics, and religion in a complex and thought process provoking way. Although Harkonnen is no longer alive in this book, his legacy still looms over the events that unfold. The remnants of House Harkonnen continue to be a threat to the stability of the Empire, with remnants of the family plotting to regain power and exact revenge on House Atreides. Furthermore, Leto and Ganima are haunted by the memory of their father's conflict with Harkonnen, which serves as an exemplary tale of the dangers of seeking power and control at any cost. Harkonnen is remembered as a cruel and ruthless leader who is willing to use any means necessary to achieve his goals, and his legacy serves as a warning to those who seek to follow in his footsteps. The story follows how Ganima and Leto's guardian Aaliyah had succumbed to abomination the possession by her grandfather, Vladimir Harkonnen. This sequence occurs at the time when Lady Jessica is pregnant, 
she undergoes spice agony under the Fremen. This resulted in her daughter Aaliyah being born as a child with the mind of a full-grown adult. After Aaliyah succumbs to the ancestral ego of her grandfather, the Baron wants nothing apart from the complete annihilation of the Atreides. Aaliyah is given another chance during the story to control this by realizing and stopping him fully. This would only be possible by continuously and consciously blocking the memory of Baron from resurfacing. The dangers that follow the children could even lead to the extinction of the sandworms that populate the planet of Arrakis. This outcome was desired by Vladimir, and he sought to achieve his means through this game of life. Ultimately, Leto displays his superhuman powers of strength and control, and confronts Aaliyah in an effort to overcome her possession which Vladimir resists. This leads to Aaliyah taking her own life by throwing herself off a lethal height, ending the attempts of Harkonnen to affect the planet and its people, as she would have rather died than let Baron Harkonnen take control. As a side note, Ian McNeese was once again responsible for the portrayal of Baron Harkonnen in the miniseries adaption of the novel, and as always, his performance was exemplary. The character was brought back in the 2021 movie Dune. As we discussed earlier, Stellan Skarsgård was quintessential in the success of 2021 Dune. His portrayal of Baron Harkonnen is legendary and will be memorable for years to come. His commitment to the cause and understanding of the character was displayed with brilliance on the screen, and it allowed a whole new generation of an audience to fully indulge in the Dune franchise. As always, Vladimir Harkonnen is a major character in the 2021 Dune, which was directed by Denis Villeneuve. In the film, Harkonnen is portrayed as a ruthless and seductive leader who is determined to maintain his control over the planet Arrakis and the valuable spice melange, again faithful to the novels. The story is more of a fabulous retelling of a magnificent universe depicted in marvelous ways adapting great camera work, stunning visuals, exceptional acting, and a faithful interpretation of the original. Harkonnen is played by Skarsgård in the film and is depicted by a grotesque figure with bloated features and a menacing presence. He is the leader of House Harkonnen, a noble family that is in constant conflict with House Atreides, led by Duke Leto Atreides. Throughout the film, Harkonnen is shown to engage in a variety of cruel and manipulative activities. At the beginning of the movie, Baron is responsible for the attack on House Atreides. This deceptive massacre results in the death of Duke Leto and many other high-ranking members of the Atreides family. This also forces Duke's son, Paul Atreides, to flee into the desert with his mother, and this is the foundation of the entire story, causing somewhat of a ripple effect. Harkonnen is also shown to be utilizing slave labor to mine the spice from Arrakis at the expense of the Fremen by exploiting them. The Fremen are the native people of the planet who continuously suffer the wrath of the Harkonnens and the remnants of the battle between the Harkonnens and the Atreides. Throughout the movie, we notice various interactions between Baron Harkonnen and his nephew Glossu Raban, played by Dave Putista, whom he considers worthless and an undeserving successor. This complicated relationship with his nephew shows his berating and abusing Raban on multiple occasions. Despite all of this, Harkonnen believes that Glossu is an essential part of his master plan in which he will use Glossu as a tool to make Fade's image close to that of a messiah. This further signifies how little regard he has for the lives of others, even his own family. Throughout the consecutive battles for control of Arrakis, Harkonnen relies on his second-in-command, Piter de Vries, who is comparable to him in his sadistic and unpredictable tendencies. The faction fights over Arrakis against Paul Atreides, who Baron sees as a threat to his control and his empire as a whole, for which he seeks to eliminate him as soon as possible. Harkonnen's character is portrayed as a complex and nuanced villain with a tragic backstory that is revealed through dialogue and flashbacks. He is shown to be driven by his desire for power and revenge, but also harbors deep-seated resentment towards the Atreides family, which dates back to his past conflicts with Duke Leto. Vladimir Harkonnen's role is that of a formidable and menacing antagonist who drives much of the conflict in the story. He is a key figure in the power struggle for control over Arrakis, and is a constant threat to the safety and well-being of the main characters. Just how powerful is Vladimir Harkonnen? The recurring primary antagonist of the entire Dune franchise must have some amazing abilities and powers under his belt, right? Well, in this case, the answer is no. Siridur Baron Vladimir Harkonnen, the menacing tyrant who serves as the villain for the majority of Dune, is an ordinary human being who is rather crippled than someone with endless powers. But that is not to say that the Baron does not possess endless powers. Despite having no qualities like superhuman strength, psychic powers, or control, 
control over the creatures that surround them, Baron Harkonnen has a plethora of other skills and ambitions that drive him to be as dangerous as he is. Firstly, Vladimir had an affinity for garnering influence and ruling from a young age. He was also trained in the arts of becoming a Harkonnen ruler, and when the time came for him to be the successor, he took no time in fitting into the role, arguably even better than the one before him. Harkonnen's tyranny is most prominently displayed in his treatment of the planet Arrakis, also known as Dune, which is the only source of the valuable spice melange. Harkonnen is in charge of mining the spice and runs the planet with an iron fist. He oversees the brutal exploitation of the native Fremen population, and his rule is marked by widespread suffering and oppression. This gives him immense power and influence, as the spice is essential for space travel and is highly coveted by the ruling powers in the Dune universe. Vladimir commands an army of massive proportions and, filling the ranks of those armies, are equally vicious soldiers. These soldiers are known for being ruthless and highly effective on the battlefield and otherwise. They follow their leader's commands to their deaths and are reminiscent of the Vikings Vikings from Nordic mythology without the inclusion of their morals and honor. This buildup of the armies gives him significant military power, which he uses to intimidate and conquer his enemies. If brutish behavior is not able to complete a job and the Harkonnen military forces are met with a higher authority figure, Baron does not fear that either. Vladimir has a powerful network of allies and agents throughout the galaxy which he uses to manipulate and control political events. He is skilled at playing different factions against each other and using his wealth and influence to gain leverage. This is seen clearly in his uneasy alliance with Shadam IV, who he is soon shown to be plotting against so that he could betray him and overtake his empire. House Harkonnen is known for its technological advancements, which include advanced weaponry and biological engineering. Baron Harkonnen is a prime example of someone who uses these tools to further his own agenda and to maintain his power. He even uses these advancements to allow him the virtue of mobility, which would have otherwise only been a dream of someone who has genetic issues such as him. But despite all of this, the most significant reason for the success of Vladimir Harkonnen as the main antagonist is his infamously genius but ruthless tactics, which include torture, assassination, and genocide. He is not afraid to use any means necessary to achieve his goals, and his enemies fear him for this reason. Vladimir's sadistic nature is also on display in his personal relationships. He is known for torturing and killing his enemies, as well as his own family members, who he perceives as being disloyal or weak. He is shown to take pleasure in the pain and suffering of others, and his acts of violence and cruelty are often senseless and gratuitous. As a master manipulator, schemer, and person of high intelligence with the hierarchical backing of the House Harkonnen, Vladimir Harkonnen is one of the most influential villains to ever exist in a futuristic, dystopian, real-world-like universe of Dune. Conclusion Vladimir Harkonnen is a noteworthy and powerful enemy in the Dune series, and both readers and viewers are left with the lasting image of his authoritarian demeanor and cruel habits. Harkonnen, the arch-enemy of House Atreides, serves as a sobering reminder about the perils of uncontrolled power and corruption through his harsh treatment of the planet Arrakis and its people, as well as his interpersonal connections. The figure of Harkonnen ultimately serves as a political allegory against the darkest facets of human nature, and in the Dune world, he is remembered for his cruelty and infamy. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one, and be safe. Thanks, everyone!